Hi everybody, as you can see on this video we're going to be um, covering doing a tube restore with this BK Precision or BNK Precision 490B uh, tube restore and I have my uh, CR7000 over here as well so I figured um, we'd do actually some an overview of, of this restore as well as um, you know do some measurements on a tube with the CR7000 and this is the tube right here. It came out of a Time Pilot. Let me see if I can show you the screen here. Um, it was a Time Pilot, and I know it's kind of messed up already. All right, hold on. I'll be right back so I can. Okay, yeah, it it came out of a Time Pilot. It's actually upside down here, but you can definitely see there's plenty of tube burn, um, screen burn on it. And I've already hooked it up to my um, to both of these already, but I figured I'd do a quick video. And kind of show you guys um, the difference between the two restorers and stuff. So this tube is definitely not good. Um, not a lot of life left on the guns, which you can probably expect based off of how much screen burn it, it's been. Um, it has on it. Uh, obviously, it's been on for a very long time. Um, those guns. So we're gonna do uh, first. What we're gonna do is a uh, just not a restore, but we're just going to test the tube with the CR7000, and then we'll come back and do the same thing on the B&K 490B to show you the difference, and then we'll actually try to restore it with the 490B. So the restore functions are actually a little bit different here between the okay, two. The first thing we have right to back. do is um, get the tube number, and because I washed this tube, I washed it, I mean, I don't know how that came out, but I washed the tube, and a lot of times the stickers will fall off. Um, I went ahead and, in permanent marker, wrote the tube number um, on the tube, so I would never uh, lose it or anything. And so it's a 19VLTP22, and the setup is actually a little bit different between um, the CR7000 and the B&K. CR7000 gives you a little bit more information, tells you that it's uh, you're going to use socket number one, which is what we have up here um, on the under underside is socket number one. The CR7000 sockets are double sided, so on one side it's uh, socket number one and the other side socket number two. And then we have, uh, we're going to set up our uh, um, video two, which is really the G2 voltage range. We're going to set that up to video 2, and our negative bias is going to be minus 132, and I've, set, I've shown all this before, and the heater voltage is a 6.3. So I've done that, and probably put this on a uh, tripod here real quick, but we're going to turn it on, set up to filament volts, or heater voltage, and make sure it's at uh, 6.3. And then um, I'll be right back. I'll set up on the tripod and we'll go through the uh, testing real quick. So you, you okay, can see. hopefully that's good enough there. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is um, go to our G1 short. And look, it shows that we have pretty much a G1 short on the uh, blue gun. So this should be from the um, cathode to G1 as what that's testing. Or it could be tested. Yeah, I think that's yeah, that's right. Um, HK short is good from the heater to the cathode, and it's testing each cathode: the the green, um, red, and blue. And then we're going to check out. Let's go back to G1 short. G1 short looks a little bit better right this second. So when it's less than full numbers, what I'm told or what I've read is that means that there's some leakage there. So it. Definitely on the G1 short test, it does not look uh, great, um, or perfect anyway. HK short's good. And then on our cutoff um, low tracking, what we're doing is basically adjusting. My understanding is that we're kind of a, adjusting. We're set to video 2. And what video 2 means is, let me see if I have this. I showed this before, but I'm going to cover it again. Um, see, anyway, I'm reading the specs, but uh, the G2 voltage range on video one is 10 volts DC to 400 volts DC, 
and on video two it's 15 to 600 volts. So when you set it up between video one or video two, you're really controlling the range of G2 voltage that you can apply. And when we're doing this cutoff low tracking, my understanding or my theory is um, that we're really kind of adjusting the G2 voltage till we actually start getting um, some some emission from the cathode at negative 132 volts. So, you know, the G1 is is holding back kind of the G2 voltage. It's a negative bias to the positive of the uh, of the G2 voltage, and then so that's holding back the electrons from emitting. So as we raise this up, we're actually applying more G2 voltage for um, electrons to eventually start coming through the grid. That's kind of how I understand it. Um, so we know that at one negative 132, we can't get our blue gun into the low cutoff range, but our um, green gun is a little is okay, or somewhat. We can get it in there, and we can get the red one in as well. But nothing on blue. So let's go down to minus 116. Nothing on blue. There we go. Now we have some blue at negative 84 um, uh, bias. So the way I understand this is this we're applying, in theory, I wish I could measure this. I haven't figured that part out. But we're in theory, we're applying negative 84 volts to the G1 grid. And we're in a voltage, G2 voltage range between 15 and 600 volts. Is that right? Yep. 15 and 600 volts. And then these cutoff levels is kind of a, what I think it's doing is adjusting the G2 voltage. Um, to get them in the cutoff. And so we have all of them in cutoff. So th this is how we set the cutoff on a CR7000. And we have good gun tracking, which means the voltage difference, difference between um, all the, the green and um or I, yeah makes me think a little bit harder but <laughs> the, the voltage difference between the the cathode the green cathode i mean the red cathode green cathode and blue um to get some emissions for a dark picture which is the low cutoff um is within a certain range of each other and that's what the gun tracking uh, means there so that's good but it's only at negative 84 so it's out of spec from the from the tube which is a uh, spec for negative 132. So now to test emissions, we have everything adjusted in the cutoff. I don't like the way it's moving around. To test for emissions, we're going to go back to our negative 132 um, bias and then go to emissions and high tracking and we can see that our emissions is bad. I mean only one gun, um, the red gun is actually above the good level and you know it's kind of acting kind of wonky anyway and uh, bad high tracking as well. So anyway so that is um, the tube is obviously not very good right it's not in good shape um, and then we would go into a restore function. So again Filament voltage. Oh, my filament voltage was a little high. Let me go back to 6.3. G1 short. Looks like there's leakage. HK short is okay. Cut off low tracking. We had to come all the way down to um, negative 84 to get them in. So that's that's our uh, low tracking is, is good and cutoff is good at negative 84, which is below the spec of the two, but it's still good. The fact that we can actually get it um, in that in that range. And then we come back to negative 132, go to emissions high tracking, and, and it's not looking pretty, right? So I'll stop there and we will come back with the B and K. All right, I'm about to um, 
plug this in and everything, but I figured I'd go over uh, some of the settings here real quick. So it, the 490B is kind of similar to the CR7000. Um, you have your power cord, obviously, and you have your adapter cord. So you plug this side into the socket here, you press this button over here and kind of get that in there. And if we look at the um, the setup book, 19 VLP, sorry for the shadow there, somewhere over here, 19 VLP, VLTP, yeah, VLTP, 19 VLTP, the only thing that this tells us in the setup book here is that we're using the CR or CA adapter 23, um, and sorry about the the fingers have been uh, changing oil and stuff but 19 VLTP 22 6.3 um, heater voltage and tw the adapter is 23 so we get our adapter here which is CA 23 which is uh, what's used for this model not a CR 23 it's a CA 23 and we just plug that in like that into the next socket and then we also hook up this. There's a little um, indentation there for alignment. Um, let me plug that in. Like that, okay. So we have our tube restore set up that way. Um, now the tests are, are very similar. So you, let me see if you can, I wanna zoom in. Uh, we want our heater voltage. You have two options here: 6.3 volts or 12 volts. So we want 6.3, whereas we had an adjustable range on the CR7000. But most of the tubes and arcade stuff is all 6.3 anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, you also want to um, probably start with the. You don't want remove G1 shorts on to start with. You want to have something else on, like cutoff test or emissions test or sh I just start with shorts um, and you can see these lines here kind of go to the ac action um, so like if you w when we get to remove G1 shorts you would press this button and you would have to have this corresponding test button um, selected and these are your um, like neon lights I guess that for um, showing the shorts you have your color tracking adjustment, and you have your cutoff voltage plus 300 to or plus 600. And to me, this is corresponding to your um, on the CR7000, like your uh, G2 uh, voltage. So a little bit different here in that you have either 300 or 600 as your two options. You have video one and video two as your two options on the CR7000. Um, you also have a couple different bias settings here. You have a G1 fixed bias setting of minus 50 or minus 70. And then you also have a variable G1 voltage. And I'll get into that um, here where when, if you follow the line, it says G1 variable, you can use this to vary the G1 voltage from negative 100 bias to zero bias when this button is selected. And I'm going to show all that stuff. Um, then you have your emissions test, um, which comes down here to your life test. We have um, our restore current. So this is a little bit different as well between the uh, CR7000. Um, your restore, it's more automated as far as, um, well, it's both of them are automated. But uh, this one kind of does, does it a little bit differently. And you have 25 milliamps or 50 milliamps. Whereas on the CR7000, um, it goes, you have a lot more options there as far as restore functions. Um, I'll cover that here when we get to it. And let's see. And then the other interesting thing is this anode um, connector. And um, when we get to the restore function, uh, I'll talk about that. But there's definitely not an anode. And you have this little anode um, that goes to the anode of the tube. Um, and plug it into your anode section here too because you don't use that at all on the CR7000 so all right so that's kind of a overview of the system itself and I have the instruction manual
And I'll be reading a lot of it because I've never, I've only done this one time with this thing. Um, you know, you have uh, your heater voltage, 6.3 or 12. Um, your G1 is negative 50 or negative 70, but you also have a variable one as well. And let's see, simultaneous guns, your restore current, etc. So, okay, I think that's that's a good enough overview. Yeah, we'll start with the uh, the testing here, and it says um, you know plug it in. Obviously, turn all your knobs counterclockwise. So your G1 voltage, your cutoff um, set. Turn it all every knob counterclockwise is what it says for um, to get prepared. And let me set it up on the tripod. And I'll all right, so let me grab this. Uh, hopefully, can you guys try to zoom in as tight as I can on the restore so you can actually see for the most part what's going on here? Because, yeah, whoops, actually, I might need to stand up so the volume is going to be a little bit different, probably. Um, yeah, that's fine. All right, hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. Right, all right. So, um, the first thing you want to do is, um, it tells you all, all the stuff in the instructions and everything, but we're kind of pretty much set up. You want to start with, um, a G1 bias of minus 50 volts. Um, I think it says there was something in here. That says why you start off that way. Whereas the CR7000, we knew that the tube, based off the tube manufacturer, um, it said to use negative 132 bias. Um, but I think it says that. Where was that? Did I read that? At? All right, hold on. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, I found it. In the setup book, which is a different book, um, in the very front, uh, it says, you know, 490B uses CA adapters instead of CR adapters, but you can use the CR adapters with this other uh, cable, CR to MX cable adapter. But anyway, um, there's they uh, annotate different tubes in here with like an at symbol or ampersand, no, no, at symbol and um, asterisks, etc. And those mean different things. And, and it says um, if there's no asterisks or, you know, um, the at symbol that uh, you set the uh, G1 to 50 volts um, and only in these other cases do you set it to higher um, but obviously in the with the 490B this is kind of referencing all the B and K devices with the 490B you only get two options 50 or 70 so in this case um, we're setting it to 50 so that's where I, where I read that at um, so we have it set to G1 bias is minus 50 volts. We're going to turn our restorer on. And we're already testing for G1 shorts right away. And you can see that what it says here when we do test for G1 shorts um, detects leakage. And uh, before we do that, maybe we should do the, the cutoff test. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave it at cutoff voltage um, plus 300. We're going to do a, our cutoff test. And basically what we want to do is we want to adjust this cutoff set function right there. Actually, if you can see that right there. Um, until one of these lines, one of these needles here on any one of the guns goes in. There's a little bit of, um, there's a little line there that says cutoff. So we don't know which one's going to actually move. But we just move this until one of them goes into the cutoff. And I have it cranked, and none of these needles on any of the guns moved at all. So what, what it says to do is if um, so slowly turn the cutoff set control right here. Watch for the pointers, and you should get them in one of them into the cutoff zone. Um, but since none of them actually moved, well, actually... That one moved a little bit. The green one just moved barely. I mean, it's just just below the cutoff. Um, what it says, if you can't get any of them into the cutoff, you need to switch your cutoff voltage to plus 600. 
and now you should be able to adjust them more. Now you can see that I can get the needles to move quite a bit more. And this makes sense now because you have your G2 voltage is um, is basically higher at this point, is my expectation. Um, and we're trying to adjust this just enough to where we're getting a black picture or enough electrons are be being emitted. So I would say that that is the cutoff is set. Now I know that's kind of difficult to see. Um, see if I can... Hopefully you can see it that way, but it, the line, if there's a little, and it, you're not checking them on each gun. It's just the one gun. It actually looks like blue and red are both in there. But anyway, cutoff is set, okay? So that's the first thing you have to do. Then we can test for G1 shorts, and we want to leave that. We don't want to mess with that, that anymore. So then we test for shorts, and I don't... Actually, let me turn my light out real quick. Hard to see if that's lit up at all. Nope, it's not lit up. Yeah, so I was just checking to see if there was any um, illumination on that, and there is nothing lit up for any leakage on our G1 short test. Now, um, that what will happen is if there is a G1 short, or or an HK short, uh, you'll get either for HK shorts for the heater to cathode, you'll get the F lit up with an R, F with a G, or F with a B. Um, with a G1 short, you'll get um, you know G1 to R, G1 to G, you know simultaneously. So you'll know which one is what based off of what lights are lit up. And then let's see if there's a G2. Does it say what G2 is? Dun, dun, dun. No, I don't. I think I did read that somewhere, but G2 with uh, G, between G2 and G1, I guess, is what it will test. And all right, so now we can test the emissions. So we tested for shorts, and the the B and K 490 said that we don't have is basically showing that we don't have any shorts. So now we want to do an emissions test. So we want to um, press our emissions test. And these pointers will show you how much emission um, you know, each of the guns is, is putting out. It's kind of strange that green has moved a little bit. So let them all kind of fall into a range. And it says here... Um, Color picture tubes in an accurate state will give current values between 0.8 and 1.6 milliamps. So we are kind of below that 0.8 and 1.6, right? So we're just like 0.05. This one might be, a, you know, the red gun. No, that's the, is that, yeah, the, the red gun uh, looks pretty decent. I mean, it's close. It's not decent. It's close. And the blue... Yeah, whatever. So, I mean, it, they're definitely in the good range, but they're kind of on the lower end of the good range. Um, some other interesting things here. It says, uh, serviceable tubes with a good re rejuvenating result will afford between 0.3 and 0.8 milliamps. Lasting results usually are not achieved when rejuvenating cathodes yielding below 0.3 milliamps. So if it was below 0.3, what the, the manual is saying is that you're probably not going to be able to have lasting results of getting this tube to uh, to emit a good picture, I guess. All right. Um, da, da, da. Now, it says to go and do some rejuvenation at this point. Also, it says that the focus light should be on. Um, in the emission mode, it indicates proper operation of the focus electrode, I guess. Um, so that's something that the CR7000, I don't believe, does anything with the focus um, tube at all. And let's see here. 
Now we can do a life expectancy test. And so what we want to do is we want to press the life test here. And you can do this at any point as long as you don't mess with this cutoff. So our cutoff is set correctly based off of negative uh, 50 volts G1 bias. And if we test the, press the life button, what you're looking for is how fast and how far um, do these needles go down to the left. So if I press the life test and hold it, now they should stabilize. And if they don't move at all, that's good. Like we actually, the green gun's actually rising, which is kind of weird. <laughs> Obviously this tube is, is whacked up. Um, but you want to see how far and how quickly they go to the left. And then there's st standard deviation. So if it goes from uh, 1 to uh, 0.8, you, your, tu your tube has less than a, um, a year left, it says. Um, if it goes from 1 to 0.9, um, you'll have, you know, maybe about a year. And then if you have, um, you know, for variations between 2 and 3 deviations, you could have one to two years of tube life. So I don't know what the heck that means in our use case because we barely use these um, on an always on standpoint, but all right. And the last test we want to do is the G1 variable test. And let's see if you can see this. Kind of shows like a graph here where you have, you know, your negative uh, G1 voltage along this axis and then we have our milliamps along this axis, and you're supposed to be able to plot them. So this seems, you know, a lot more complicated than the CR7000 doing um, an extended cutoff test or a variable cutoff test. But you can still obviously do it. Um, so what you want to do is go to our G1 variable. And actually, let's go ahead and set it, because I think this is negative 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50. So that's what we had as our G1 before. And I just want to set it right in the middle. Do our variable. Okay, and my theory was is proven out correctly because I have my variable G1 voltage and set and it's still at the cutoff um, setting for for your green gun, so which is interesting. Um, but anyway, what it, what it says here is um, for their color tracking button. Oh, you actually got to press and hold this yellow button. All right. And so <laughs> usually it's supposed to, to um, go to a certain number. So like we were at negative on the CR7000, we were at um, negative 132 bias and we weren't getting any um, voltage. But we were getting able to get everything in the cutoff with good low tracking at negative 80. So let me go to, I think it was negative 84, right? Um, so let me go to about negative 80 or me, maybe even negative 70. Not negative 80, it's fine. Okay, negative 80. And then I'm gonna press and hold this yellow color tracking button. And wow, we don't, we don't get jack. Um, all right, so let me go down to Negative, let's go all the way to, as I'm doing that, you can see the, the lines move. So like as I'm going to, this is negative 10, I can actually get um, the needles to move, right? So I want to press and hold the yellow button and then adjust all of these to the uh, line with the highest one. So the highest one is probably right there, and I can't. So I can't get the blue gun to align while I'm holding the yellow to uh, the green gun. So that means like our tracking is off, right? Um, now if I come down, let me go to 50. Hold that. Yeah, see I can't get the blue in there. Or the red. If I come down to zero, um, G1 voltage is now at zero bias. I press the yellow button. 
you got to hold this color tracking button down the entire time you're doing this test. And what we want to do is try to adjust these. Have everything turned to counterclockwise. We, the highest one is green, which is at, you know, that's 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. It's at 0 0.9. And we want to adjust all of them to be just about 0 0.9. Maybe a little bit lower. And we can't do it. Okay. So the color tracking is definitely is definitely off because I have the blue gun uh, cranked all the way. So it's a little bit different and I you know I haven't done enough of them to be super confident at this point with this uh BNK 490B. Um but that's kind of how you're doing a cutoff or color tracking test um, with the 490B versus the CR7000. The CR7000, you're kind of doing it simultaneously, um, whereas here you're doing it a little bit different. You're setting your cutoff voltage um, based off of a fixed G1 bias, and you, I think you're doing it a little bit differently on the CR7000. And then when you're adjusting, um, you know, tracking, you know, you, you got to press and hold the button and it's just, anyway, it's a little odd. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a restore function. Um, and for the restore, it says to hook up this anode cap, which is kind of interesting. I was like, I've never used this before doing a restore on the and I actually measured to see if there's any voltage coming out of this thing, out of this anode. Um, in normal, I just put my meter on there. I think it was like, you know, a, f a few volts, like, you know, 4.6 volts, maybe even AC. I don't even think it was DC. So I don't think it, it was probably nothing, you know. So we have our anode cap in there. I don't know why you need that for the restore function, but it definitely says to do it. Um, and the first thing you want to do, and I think we're going to restore, I well, you know, all the guns, I guess. And it runs like a 70 second test and it's automatic. So let me see here. Push the uh, key restore gun 23. So we're going to restore, let's restore blue. Set our restore to 25 milliamps. Um, which is the lowest setting so this is you know doing the least amount of uh, voltage I guess or, or to burn off stuff and let's see here all right just press the restore I guess here we go now the restore light goes on. Now you can, wow, you can see some sparks flying and stuff. And we can see our, our needle for our emissions um, going up there during this test. It says it runs it for 70 seconds and everything's automatic. So I'm sure it's you know either pulsing you know the, the charge at it or something, um, but it will turn off by itself that light, that restore on. See, it's still going. It says a rejuvenating current intensity can be followed at the instrument respondent um, cathode. So that's what we're kind of watching there. Okay, and it's done. Um, so after the rejuvenation process is uh, done, you can take a new measurement, um, etc. So let's go ahead and probably do the other. I don't really care about this tube, so with with um, so we can probably just go ahead and do the restore function on on the other 
guns as well. So let's do um, red as well. You can see right there. As that's doing the um, doing its thing for 70 seconds, I'll read some more of this. So, um, some tube rejuvenation comments. Um, in order to decide whether it's worth rejuvenating a CRT, it will be helpful to know conditions in which the tube has been used. Picture tubes that work from the first day at full intensity, highest contrast and brightness for long periods of time, and have lost brightness will not yield the desirable result even after several rejuvenations. This is the case for many TV game picture tubes. So they're talking about arcade tubes. So like a lot of arcade tubes don't really respond too well, is what the B&K is saying here, um, to rejuvenation. These tubes may be rejuvenated only in very few cases because their cathodes are short on barium oxide, um, which is, the uh, I guess, the material that's sitting on the cathode um, that it gets the, um, heated up and emitted. All right, so let's go ahead and go green. All right, green's firing up. Um, another event is one of tubes working in normal conditions in household TV sets. Standard contrast and brightness adjustment. In these sets, the cathode loses its emitting capability or capacity due to dirt. Dirt is caused by fine dust particles left in the glass tube during the manufacture process. The dust particles that are depositing on the cathode, the less... Let's see. The more the dust particles depositing on the cathode, the less emission will be supplied to the picture, uh, and it may become weak and undefined. These picture tubes may be repaired by a rejuvenation that gives a good result, provided that a sufficient mass of barium oxide subsist, ugh, subsists in the uh, cathode. So, um, at least I'm taking up some of the downtime here. Um, so, anyway, so... That, I thought, was very interesting. I wanted to read that because I found that very interesting. I mean, that B and K is basically saying arcade tubes most likely aren't going to have a lot left on the cathode um, to restore the tube to begin with. Um, but now that we're done restoring everything at 25 amps, and I think it said also that, you know, the more, you know, I read somewhere, was it there? That you might have to actually run the run it a little bit more times for those um, situations. Let's see. Ta -da. The rejuvenating process is likely to be repeated several times when applied to very exhausted tubes. In color tubes, it is important that emitting values of the three systems are nearly the same. Okay. Okay, so let's go back and do our G1 shorts test. And I don't see anything lit up here, so that's fine. Um, we're going to go to our cutoff. And let's go ahead and set our cutoff. See if we can set it at minus 300. I can't get the needles to move at all at minus 300. Well, that's interesting. So now the cutoff test, you can see all the guns are responding a lot better than they did before. So now all the guns are responding. So this is definitely a change um, in behavior when I'm um, adjusting the cutoff set knob here. All of them are kind of moving. And I want to get the highest one, I guess, into the cutoff. Which looks like that would be red. And blue are pretty spot on. Green just slightly below that. So the cutoff is, is set now. Um, and we want to do our emissions test. Wow. 490B brought the thing kick some butt on this thing. That's what it looks like to me. That was that was pretty um, good result, I would say. I mean, everything is near 1, and we're looking for something between 0.8. What did it say? 
Da, da, da. Emissions. Probably looking for anything between 0.8 and 1.6. So anything between 0.8, kind of we're at 0.9 and 1 there. So we're, we're pretty good there. Now, while we're doing the emissions test, let's take the life test. And what we want to see is really, hopefully, the guns don't move too much. The needles don't move too much. I'm pressing it. They're not moving a ton. Just barely a little bit. Everything's stable there? Yeah, so, I mean, we definitely, according to everything we've read so far, looks like we actually have a at least a, a year left in these tubes. So I might let this tube cool down and come back and do this measurement again. Our focus is good here as well. And let's see. All right, let's do our variable cutoff test. So now we're going to change our cutoff to our G1 variable test. And if we set it to 50, You kind of have to. I don't quite. I think what you're supposed to do is actually plot these. Like, so you go to 90 and you make a recording, and you go to 80 and you make a recording, you know, 70, 60, 50. I mean, we, we only get the needles to move at 50. Um, and then you just want to, you know, keep going and try to adjust them all within a uh, spec here. So I just want to go, let me go to negative 10. And this is the highest one right there. So let me adjust this one. And I know this is not a great tube to be doing this on because I'm sure we should be getting readings at most of those G1 voltages. But what you want to do is if you can adjust all these guns um, to, into, you know, the same, reading the same milliamp value, I guess, as the, the highest gun, it means that the guns are, are in spec. I mean, that you have good tracking, I guess, because the voltage between the red gun versus the green gun versus the blue gun to achieve cutoff is not... Um, you know, so far off that you can't you can't adjust it in that range or whatever. So, very similar to the CR seven thousand. Um, I just haven't played with it enough to probably describe it better. But anyway, so we're good within you know at negative ten, at negative twenty. You know, it looks like we can get them all adjusted. At negative fifty. Yeah, and then can't get anything on. Anyway, so I would say let's go back to our emissions test real quick. And remember, we haven't messed with our cutoff um, set va variable here at all. So actually, emissions is even reading better now than before. Oh, I need to set this all the way back to the left. All right, so there you go. That's that's our our emissions at negative fifty volt G one bias because this doesn't do anything at this point in this test. The variable G one voltage because we don't have that button checked off. So we're using the G negative G one voltage that was initially set at um, plus six hundred volts here and uh, negative fifty volts G one bias. So anyway, that's. I think that's a, a success. So I'm going to power down and then we'll come back and uh, hook up the CR7000 and see what it reads now after a restore on the 490. Okay, so I have the CR7000 uh, hooked back up and we have our negative voltage set up to um, minus 132, which is uh, what the CR7000 setup book said. Let's go ahead and kind of put all these cutoff levels there. G1 short. 
Wow. That's definitely much better after the, the B, B and K. Now, the CR7000 was showing some leakage on the guns um, before. Um, and the, the um, gosh, B and K uh, wasn't the 490B. Um, but, hey, you know what? It now, now it's not showing any, any leakage on the CR7000 on G1 short. HK short looks good. Cut off low tracking. Okay, can't get anything at negative 132. Just a little bit on the red gun at negative 100. So we're kind of doing the equivalent of the variable um, G1 test on the 490B. I guess it's similar. Okay, so our cutoff is... Uh, a little jacked up, a little. Let's get it nice and steady. Okay. Urgh. All right. Sorry about that. I put probably putting my arm in the way. Um, anyway, this one's kind of jumping around a little bit. What is that? The uh, green gun? Alright, we're just going to leave it like that and say it's... I mean, it's pretty good. It's not it's kind of not stable. So we're going to go back to 132 and then do our emissions and we're definitely better now as well so we're above the the good range here and the CR7000 doesn't actually tell you I mean this is these numbers on here are the filament volts this is just whether it's good or bad obviously if I tested that at a um, left my bias at negative 84 you know it would be a lot lot better but according to the CR7000 I need to put that back to negative 132 to actually do a true emissions test um, and then to do a life test on the CR7000 you you press and hold this right here for 10 seconds and if it goes below the good range in 10 seconds then you know the guns don't have that much life but this tube is looking much better after um, the 490B did a restore on it. And to give you an idea, let me take my camera off the tripod here. Um, the C, Let's see here. The 490B is applying either 25 or 50 milliamps of current. Um, and we use the 25 milliamps version. And the CR7000 has a low, normal, high, and extended and that right there shows you how many milliamps it's applying. So reactivate is applying one milliamp. So that's definitely less than what the the 490B can do. Um, low is 40 milliamps, which is almost you know um, up to the limit. So you know the 490B is doing something that's um, at 25 between the reactivate and the low, and then it's the high on the 490B is just barely over the low on the CR7000. So um, you can definitely get more, seems like more aggressive on the guns um, with the CR7000 as far as milliamps that are going to be applied. But, you know, on the B&K, it applies it over 60 sec 70 seconds, I think. So it's probably doing, you know, a bunch of different cycles um, and multiple voltages. Who knows what the B&K is doing um, maybe it's doing something a little bit more, you know, automated and multiple. So anyway, that's, I think I've talked enough and hopefully that was, um, interesting to a few people that restore tubes. And I look forward to doing another one here soon just to see the results and comparisons. Oh yeah. Also, um, that B and K was, uh, buffet. I'll check out his YouTube channel. I'll link it to it here, but, uh, he let me borrow that. Uh, he he's hadn't used it um, and wanted, 
was thought I'd be interested in uh, kind of figuring it out a little bit. So this uh, video is uh, thanks to Buffet for letting me use the BK490B, which is a kind of expensive, nice uh, restore, um, as well as the CR7000 that I have. So thanks, Buffet. See ya.